So there are many products out there that are applied topically. Uh, virtually none of them have much in the way of scientific evidence to support their effectiveness or even their safety. However, there is a little bit here and there, and uh, I'm going to mention five products or sets of products and um, the little that we know about them. So one such product is coconut oil. And this seems to be a real rage among my patients right now, applying coconut oil to the skin. It's clear, it's easy to spread, it's not greasy. Uh, a lot of patients feel that it really helps to soothe. In fact, there's not been a single study done with EB and coconut oil. But coconut oil has been looked at in a few studies for a common problem called eczema that shares with EB the tendency to have overgrowth of certain bacteria on the skin, including a bacterium called Staph aureus. And in fact, in two articles that have been published just in the last few years, one has shown an antibacterial effect of the virgin coconut oil, and the other showed actually a, a marked improvement in the uh, barrier of the outer layer of skin and an improvement in the inflammation that's associated with eczema. Whether this holds true for our, our EB patients, we really don't know, but at least there is some scientific evidence that coconut oil might help with inflammation, with retaining water, and also for its antibacterial effects. Another topical that's used as an antibacterial agent is honey, but not just any honey, medical grade honey. This is Manuka honey, and it's very important that it be medical grade because that means that it's been sterilized, that you're not putting bacteria that can be in honey on the skin. And that includes bacterial toxins like botulinum. Uh, botulinum is a neurotoxin, and we certainly wouldn't want to get that absorbed through our skin. However, Manuka medical grade honey has been shown to have antibacterial effects and can be helpful in individuals who have some overgrowth of bacteria and most of our especially older individuals with epidermolysis bullosa will show both that staph aureus and pseudomonas on the skin. It can sting. If you dilute it too much it's not as effective. Uh, and it does tend to cause an increase in oozing when it first goes on the skin. Another group is the silver group. And of course, silver has antibacterial properties as well. It is available in forms ranging from colloidal silver to silver creams that are not colloidal to dressings that have the silver, including as silver nanoparticles in them. And some investigators are a little worried about using silver because we know that especially from colloidal silver, it can be released and get into the bloodstream. And if it gets into the bloodstream in large amounts, it can cause what's called argyria, where the skin takes on a silvery gray hue to it. And of course, that can be a bit of a cosmetic problem, but we really don't know that silver um, on the whole is otherwise dangerous to individuals. At any rate, if you're going to use silver, you probably want to go with a dressing formulation if you can. And do be aware of the fact that silver is only active if it's what's called ionized, and it can only be ionized if it gets wet, whether that's with water or a body fluid or uh, tissue drainage. So you wouldn't ever want to put it on a dry wound, and you wouldn't want to put it on a wound where you're dressing it with some kind of a, a greasy preparation, because that will keep out the water as well. There's also an agent called Caragel T, and Caragel T is actually made from keratins. And keratins have been shown in trials in the laboratory to encourage wound healing. So Caragel T uh, is a product that's been more recently used and in open label studies, that is studies where there is no control that doesn't have the active product in it, uh, it seems to be helpful in several different types of EB in causing wounds to close more readily. And finally, another topical to mention 
has a name now of SD101. I'm sure it'll have another name someday that's not quite so cryptic. But this is an agent that we actually had the opportunity to look at in an open label trial of, of all types of EB in eight patients and found very significant closure of the target wounds as well as a lot of comments from the parents about how it had effects that decreased the itchiness and the pain making dressing changes easier and improving quality of life. This agent was approved by the FDA to undergo very rapid testing and a phase 2B trial that is a double blind randomized controlled trial in which there was a placebo arm very very important when we're talking about testing new agents uh, was included. Now I can't tell you the results of the trial they have not yet uh, been uh, become available but that is a new agent that we're hoping might help uh, across the board in patients with EB.